Nebraska Tractor Test Law was created in 1919, and the first test was in 1920 of the Waterloo Boy. And since that time, uh, in our first century of operation, we've tested over 2,200 tractors. Uh, the original test lab is now a, a museum and a historic landmark for ASABE. And in the museum, you can, uh, you can see a display of the story of how the, the test law came to be and some of our historic equipment. So in the late 1980s, Nebraska Tractor Test Lab joined OECD, and it's currently one of about 27 OECD official tractor testing stations around the world, and the only one in the Western Hemisphere. And being part of the OECD, much of the tractor testing is uh, identical to the procedures original to Nebraska Tractor Test Lab, and that includes PTO testing, which we do on our dynamometers. So we have two dynos, uh, 350 horse capacity uh, for smaller machines, and a recently refurbished uh, dynamometer to increase capacity to 1,200 horsepower. Uh, the test law requires that each tractor sold in the state of Nebraska for commercial purposes has uh, a representative model of that tractor tested if it's over 100 horsepower. If it's less than 100 horsepower, the testing is optional, but there's a, an incentive to do so in that uh, customers for commercial ag will get a, a tax incentive uh, if the tractor has been tested. So at our PTO dynamometer, we'll run uh, eight to 10 hours of PTO tests at various loads and speeds, uh, running one hour at rated engine speed, maximum power, and standard PTO speed. Uh, we do a lug run to find peak power and peak torque. Uh, we measure diesel exhaust fluid consumption during regen events if the tractor is equipped with a, a DPF. And we also uh, operate the tractor in economy PTO mode if the tractor is equipped with a shiftable PTO. So in addition to PTO testing, we do drawbar testing as part of our compulsory test. The required portion is with the tractor unballasted. And to load the tractor, we use our test car, which is uh, somewhat of a, a portable dynamometer. Uh, so the tractor is connected uh, to the drawbar at the front and where we measure drawbar pull. Uh, this load unit can handle about 200 horsepower by itself. And if larger tractor is being tested, we'll at attach load units to the back of this. And that's where our student workers are, are very helpful. Uh, in addition to helping with uh, test setup and, and other activities, they operate load units during testing. So our, our test car has a closed loop control, so where the test engineer operating it can control the, the test car to maintain a constant drawbar pull, a constant engine speed, or a constant ground speed. Uh, tractors are tested in several gears uh, to, to measure maximum power and maximum pull. All right, so when, when we have a tractor set up to be tested, it's connected to the front of our test car, and it just pulls the test car around the track uh, with this hitch. The drawbar pull is measured with these load cells. Uh, they have 100,000 pound capacity. Uh, we have two of them, it's uh, for redundancy, uh, to make sure they uh, give us an accurate measurement. Our fuel system is, is under the hood where we supply fuel to the tractor being tested and we control the temperature and measure the fuel rate. So as we move around the tractor, we've got a data acquisition system in this box and connections for the speeds, pressures, and temperatures uh, that we measure during the test. So we typically have one of our test engineers and a student in the cab. Uh, the test engineer is coordinating activities between the test car, the tractor being tested, and if there are any load units uh, attached behind. And the student is generally running the data acquisition system inside the cab. Uh, so they'll start data acquisition at the, at the straightaway on our test track, and they'll measure uh, steady state performance data for 500 feet, and that data gets averaged together uh, to record the performance for that particular load point. To measure wheel slip and actual ground speed, uh, we have what we call a fifth wheel underneath the tractor, and it just rolls on the ground and it's calibrated to measure actual uh, travel speed or distance. So we can compare that to actual wheel speed on the tractor being tested and calculate wheel slip from that. So the, the load from our test car is provided through some uh, dynamometers that are connected uh, to the drive line. So as we pull the tractor around the track, the rear axles through a drive shafts and a gearbox and a transmission are connected to 
uh, the dynamometers that are part of the closed loop control, uh, providing resistance to being pulled. And at the back, as just another hitch where we can connect our load units for high capacity tractors uh, if we need additional, uh, additional load on the tractor. So all of the data from our various tests are summarized in a standardized report and those reports are available free through our tractor test website or through the University of Nebraska Library's Digital Commons.